So if you are a part of the Linux community and you've been paying attention, you'll know that there, there has been a lot of hullabaloo about Red Hat over the course of the last three or four weeks. Now, I'm not going to be going into any of the specifics in this video, simply because there are many other videos that have done so probably better than I ever could. I will link to a couple of those videos in the video description as long, along with a couple articles that kind of explain what is going on. Bottom line is that Red Hat has taken the RHEL source code and put it behind a paywall. That's really the very simplest way I can explain it. So the question I want to answer today is, should it matter to everyday Linux normie? And the answer to that question is going to be very interesting. So if you would be so kind as to leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. So does the Red Hat stuff matter to regular Linux users? And the answer to that question is yes and also no i know i do these videos where i talk about something and then i don't give a definitive answer and it just pisses people off but it's a complicated situation and depending on how you look at it it can be very influential on the entire linux community but in terms of being something that affects you personally probably not so let's talk about individual impacts first so really the only way that this is going to impact you individually at least immediately is going to be if you used rel already so if you are a rel customer who never paid for it and you didn't ever want to pay for it you know then you're going to have to try to figure out how you're going to get that license so uh, rel does have mechanisms to get rel for free you can get a rel account for free if you're a developer and i think even if you run a, like a big developer shop you can get a whole bunch of licenses for free they have mechanisms for that if you need to do that if you run a small business you're going to be in a little bit different position because you're probably going to end up having to pay for it if you weren't already right so honestly then you're going to either have to pony up the cash in order to get the support contract or you're going to have to search for an alternative now I don't think that there are many small business owners in my audience who are using RHEL, but I could be wrong about that. So in terms of like just individual impact, it's going to be very minimal for most people, right? Most people, I don't know if this is a surprise to anybody, but most people who just use regular desktop Linux don't use RHEL. Uh, it's, I don't think that's much of a surprise for most people, but they do use things that are impacted by RHEL. So if you know if you use you know Fedora or you use CentOS or something like that, you know you could then face some impact from this RHEL decision. Now Fedora is a very interesting. Thing to talk about when it comes to this decision because the way that fedora works is that it's actually upstream from red hat linux or red hat enterprise linux i should say so fedora is also a community distribution it is controlled vastly by the community however the vast majority of people who work on it or at least i should say about 40 percent of the people who work on it do work at red hat so red hat does have uh impact or influence on fedora and the direction that fedora goes so i've heard a lot of people in this whole situation say that well yeah now because red hat has turned into the devil i'm not going to use fedora anymore uh, that's a personal choice personally i don't think that red hat will actually do anything that will negatively impact fedora but I was also kind of shocked that they put their source code be behind a paywall. So their intentions for Fedora itself are unknown and they don't have as much control there as they do with RHEL because they control all of RHEL, whereas they do not control Fedora. It's a Fedora, it's a community project and it'd be much easier for uh, Fedora to carry on if Red Hat were to pull some shenanigans than it would be for RHEL, right? If, if, some, if for some reason they decided to pull back all of their developers, Fedora they could theoretically carry on with the developers that are outside of Red Hat theoretically it'd be probably harder and they'd have to do some working stuff but it could happen if you're worried about how the red hat decision affects fedora i would say that it probably doesn't mostly at all right because of the position that for the, that red hat is actually in in terms of relationships to rel but also because it's a, a very community-centric distribution you're going it has much more autonomy autonomy from red hat than rel did so I think as we go forward, Fedora will be con or will continue to be independent. Uh, but if you've chosen not to use it anymore, you can obviously find an alternative. It's not going to, you know, nobody's forcing you to use Red Hat. I just don't think that the the negative aspect of Red Hat is going to impact Fedora as much as we think it is. Now, now obviously, I could be wrong about that because we've talked. I've talked about Fedora just a couple days ago, trying to add telemetry to their thing, and that was proposed by a team at Red Hat. But I will say, or at least from the thread. 
I've read that that proposal was in place before it was being worked on before the whole Red Hat nonsense was actually going on. So whether or not that that's true, we don't know, but still it feels like they're not actually connected in any way. So in terms of individual impact of the Red Hat news, I think it's going to be fairly minimal. Now, the more interesting aspect of this conversation is how the decision is going to affect the, the Linux community you know, more broadly and Linux itself more broadly. So the merits behind open source software rely on everybody playing by the same rules. OK, so when you create an open source project, you're not only putting it under a license so that other people can do things with your code, but also so you can do things with your code. Right. So that license not only gives rules for people who are going to use your code, but also for you to use your code. Now, that also goes for co code that you use from other people. So the idea here is that it's a community of people who are doing things under a set of licenses that allow the code to kind of flow freely from one place to another with certain very minimal restrictions, right? So if you are creating an open source project, you are probably relying on open source code from someone else as well, unless you're building from straight from the ground up. Let's just say, for example, you're creating a terminal emulator. I, I just pulled this out of my ass. Let's just say you're, you're coding a new terminal emulator. You're probably going to be pulling from different open source projects in order to do so, right? You're going to you're going to rely on, you know, maybe you're going to pull in some GTK files so that you can create the wrapper around it or whatever. You know, you're going to pull in from different open source files and you're allowed to do that because of the licenses that all that stuff is under, right? And when you put your source code out there as well under the same licenses, so somebody could take your new terminal emulator and make it their own, you know, it, that's the way open source is supposed to work. The problem here is that Red Hat has decided to change the rules, right? They've decided to put barriers in front of their source code. And while legally they probably can do this and get away with it, it does change the nature of the way open source is supposed to work. And we can bury our heads in the sand, but it's very likely that other companies who have in the past developed their source code openly will see this and think that it might be a good idea for them to do it too right i mean i don't know that it's actually going to be the case but it's possible that, that they could that other companies could see this and think that it's a good idea and once one company does it and if especially if it works and they start seeing astronomical profits because of it which i don't think is going to happen i think that the blowback on them is actually going to be negative in terms of them getting more business but i don't know that much about red hat's business to begin with so who knows how how it's going to play out but the idea is if it does end up being successful we could see other companies be much less open with their code which kind of starts a domino effect of companies who traditionally do support open source being more closed with their with their with their source code and that is bad for the linux community in general simply because a lot of developers rely on source code by other people to do their work right that's the whole point of open source there's a broad length a broad pool of code that people pull in from other places you know libraries and all this stuff that are worked on by other people and if all of a sudden some of that stuff you know goes away or is less open than it once was you know that's going to affect their ability to then not only create their own projects but also share that code with other people so it, it, it can filter down and, and trickle down to the more smaller developers and then all of a sudden linux is not as open as it once was now that's the worst case scenario i don't think that that's actually going to happen i think that the re the reaction to red hat's nonsense has been so negative i think that they were actually quite surprised at how many people actually cared because you know like I can't even tell you how many times I've talked about Red Hat before this. I, I, I talked about Red Hat, you know, maybe once or twice in, in a podcast somewhere along the line over the course of the last five years, but definitely not this often. This decision has gotten the entire Linux community riled up, not just people who use RHEL, not just people who use Rocky or Alma Linux either. These are regular Linux users who have probably never even used RHEL that are upset about this. And the reason they're upset is because it goes against everything that we've been told about open source right it feels like they're i mean you can see it from some of the the 
YouTube titles that we've seen over the course of last week. Oh no, Red Hat's going closed source, right? We've, we, proprietary garbage and closed source and proprietary and all this stuff, right? And while yes, some of that stuff is definitely clickbait, I've been guilty of that for sure. The only reason why that clickbait works is because it feeds on the fear that Red Hat has actually created by making this decision. They have when one company can can take their source code and put it behind a paywall and basically say you can't use this code for whatever you want because that's basically what they're saying. The yes, you can go pay them the money, get the source code, and then leave with it. But once you do, your account's gone, right? They they can shut your account gone, and that means that you can't get the next version for free without having to sign up for another account. And while technically you can continue to do that, and you could fork it like Sousa has done like Oracle has done, you could do that. It just adds that barrier to it. And the thing about open source is that it's supposed to be barrier free. Now, it doesn't mean that it's supposed to be free as in money. So the the one big misconception that I've heard from a lot of people is that you're not supposed to charge for open source software, which is bloody nonsense. It's, it's, not, non, it's not true at all. In fact, we want people to be able to We've talked about money on this channel before when it comes to people, developers actually making money. So we want them to be able to make money. But for years, Red Hat has been the shining example of being able to make the money that you know a lot of people haven't and still be a shining beacon of open source methodology and theory and ideology and stuff, right? They have been both. And what worries people now is that they're no longer that that way, right? And and that has led to a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, not only amongst people who use RHEL, but also the rest of the Linux community. Because if, if the corporation that spends so much time actually developing a whole bunch of the technologies that Linux uses is becoming more closed with their source code, what happens to all those technologies that affect the broader Linux community? Things like SystemD, things like Wayland, things like Fedora, you know, the, the more broad topics, you know, Red Hat supports a lot of open source projects. Will that continue as we go on? Because we can no longer trust Red Hat to be good stewards of open source source code. Now, the thing is, a lot of those things are much more community driven than we make it out to be so it's not going to be like uh red hat just decided all, all of a sudden system d is going to be closed source don't think that that's going to be, it, it is actually possible so i don't think we have to actually worry about that but it is that fear that people have like this is a company that contributes a significant amount to the linux kernel that contributes to all these open source projects that affect every single linux distribution that we use you know, and they're becoming more closed source, or it feels like they're coming more closed source. It's not actually the the hundred percent truth behind it, but that's the way it feels to a lot of people, and that is worrying. Now, I think that Red Hat is going to end up regretting this decision. I think if not, if they haven't already, they will very soon, simply because they've basically instead of drawing in new customers, what they've actually done is created more competitors instead of less. And uh, not only have they've created more competitors, but they've done so of with companies that actually have the money to back it up with SUSE and Oracle, right? Now, whether you have opinions on Oracle or not, or even SUSE or not, you can't deny that those companies have a lot of money and can put forth at least somewhat of an effort to make a competitor to Red Hat. And I don't think that that was their goal when they decided to do this. I think that they wanted to snuff out Rocky and Alma. Instead, what they've ended up doing was creating more. So they cut, they tried by cutting the head off the Hydra, they've actually spawned more heads. So, yeah, they have some some issues, and I think that they will uh, end up regretting it if they don't already. So, to answer the question, how is this going to end up affecting the Linux community as a whole, I think that it's going to make people trust it less, right? Especially, I mean, you're already seeing this, right? Already, people who use Linux and open source software were very distrustful of corporations. If you ask most people who outside of people who work for Canonical, you'd say that most people distrust Canonical and always have, right? Because Canonical has, over the course of the last 20 years, made some really weird decisions when it comes to their project. You know, Amazon affiliate links and and destroying Lib32 at, for about 30 seconds. You know, you, you get the idea, right? They've made some really weird choices. And uh, that has led to a lot of distrust of Canonical because they're a corporation, because they work fondly with Google and, Mono and Monopoly. I, I, I call Microsoft Monopoly. <laughs> uh, that was a Freudian slip. They work with Microsoft 
Canonical works with all, the, the, all these other companies, and that leads to a lot of distrust of Canonical, right? And that has always been there. Uh, there's always been a distrust, a distrust of Red Hat as well because they're a major corporation, but they've always had a very large cachet of, of goodwill simply because they do contribute so much to the open source community with, you know, System D and, and Xorg and Wayland and all this stuff, right? That has gone, right? And what you're going to see from now on is a much larger distrust of companies. And I think that that's probably going to end up being a good thing. Because if we end, actually end up, if we become less trustful of the companies that have influence over the source code, we will watch them more and pay attention to things that go on and try to at least exhibit some control over the things that go on inside the Linux community. Whereas before we might've just been saying, well, yeah, Red Hat's making this decision. Yeah, it's not that great, but you know, it's Red Hat. They obviously know what they're doing. Now we're going to look at much more distrustfully at Red Hat. We're going to look much more distrustfully at, you know, Canonical and SUSE and Oracle and all these different companies that actually play a big portion of a role in the actual development of Linux, even if we don't pay attention to them as much as we should. I think that we will pay more attention to that stuff now than we did before. And maybe that will end up being the silver lining of this whole situation so that is it for this video if you have thoughts on the whole red hat stuff you can leave those in the comment section below i probably won't make another video on this at all we may mention on the, on the podcast but we'll see about that uh, you, if you haven't already leave a thumbs up on this video i'd really appreciate it it really does help the channel you can follow me on mastodon or odyssey those links will be in the video description you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast links for youtube and PayPal will be in the video description as well if you'd rather support me there. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the challenges would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I thank you every single day for your support, and I truly mean it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.